Parkway. You'll see the Great American Eclipse live here from WHAS 11. The Kentuckiana version as people are getting ready. They're testing out their glasses. And I'm with uh, Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine, Meteorologist Christina San Juan. Yeah, let's, they're, let's, they're soaking up about half the sun's power right now. I know, and, and you know what? It is fading. Uh, I can you know, I can sort of see it almost looks like the beginning of a cloudy day, which it's not. Feels it like seems, a slightly cooler breeze, maybe. It seems, slightly. It seems like it's dimming. Let's talk about the planets people are going to see yeah, during so the eclipse. Not just do we get to be surrounded with darkness in the middle of the afternoon, but we're also going to have Venus and Jupiter that's going to be visible to the naked eye. Now, not only that, but there's actually a very rare comet that only shows up every 71 years here. It's called uh, the 12P comet. I love and comet 12P. <laughs> sure, except it's called the Devil's that's Comet. News to me. It's, it's the Hornet. <laughs> well, it, here's the thing. But he comes back every seven years. He's a friendly little comet. 71. 71 years, so excuse me. Again, again, uh, once in a lifetime experience for that, some of that us. That could still maybe be kind of difficult to see. Yes, yeah, so you do need binoculars or the telescope in so order to see that, but the planets should be visible with the it's naked a, eye. It's a horned comet, also known as the Devil's Comet, and what is it going to be right below the moon? I guess it's had, it has two comet, or, or two horns, and that's why they call it, yes, the Devil's Comet. Now, we call this a Great American Eclipse, but also what we don't talk about a lot is that this is a great cosmic coincidence. What are the chances that the sun and the moon would be, would appear to us as the, exactly the same size? The sun is 400 times larger than the moon, but it's 400 times farther away, so it just matches perfectly. What are the odds in the universe we would be able to see this? And the magnetic field of the sun right now is its most active. Apparently, you know, every 11 years or so, it goes through cycles, and it was on a lower end during 2017. Right. So. Do you think we'll see solar flares? Well, when, so what that means for us, I mean, the corona is going to be much brighter than what we saw in 2017. You know, it looks like the streams, and it actually is hotter than the face of the sun. It's just much dimmer. So the face of the sun always blocks out uh, that kind of light. And with you the saw naked it, Doug, back day. in 2017, the, the Bailey's beads, those little Bailey's effects. beads is what they call it when, when, it, when the a moon goes complete between the Earth and the, and the sun, and we have total darkness. You'll see, uh, you'll you'll see the light shooting out. That's because the moon is imperfect. It's got craters. It's got valleys. It, as we the know, it's not smooth. Right, and that's really cool to see. So hopefully, we're able to call that out whenever we do start to see Bailey's beads during uh, maximum the, eclipse. And so many experiments are underway. Not only just from the National Weather Service, but get this: NASA has a high altitude jet that's going to fly the complete path of the totality of darkness, so it can be in it the longest just to study the corona. Why do they care so much about the corona and what it does? Well, on a normal day, they can't see it. So if you can't see it, they can't study it. Um, this is the perfect time for them to really uh, get to know uh, or do different experiments with the corona. And speaking of flying, you know, all of the airlines had the special flights. I wonder if we're going to at least be able okay. to see contrails. Also, Doug, you the too. sun has been around a long time, but we still don't know everything about it. That's why we're still studying it. Flying. Part of NASA's research uh, revealed that the, it, the, the temperature of the corona is three point Point five million degrees and that's one thing they want to look you mentioned the flights now in 2017 that was the funniest thing I noticed was all the airlines crisscrossing I thought what are all these little comets but it wasn't it was the airlines full of uh -huh. passengers paying big money crisscrossing the path and especially this year because there was such a big concern about cloud cover over much of the United oh States and the path of totality we got to talk about that as well we can bring up max HD radar and satellite the luck that we have had here in French Lick especially, it's even cloudier down in Louisville and in Kentucky right now, but here through the path of totality in Indiana, take a look at this. There's some showers and thunderstorms in eastern Kentucky and down through uh, in Texas, you can see a lot of clouds, and there's actually a chance of some storms developing here over the next couple of hours. So right where the path of totality is right here, I mean, we could not have had better luck. It's typically more cloudy than not in these April days. Just one sunny day in the last 24 years here. At, 